Welcome back everyone today. This is something that's honestly huge for the game. I have a simple question. Which of these would you rather play with? On one side, we've got class weak ores, right? You know them, maybe you love them, maybe you hate them. But on the other side, we've got Blizzard's answer to that. Their weak aura killer, which they call the cooldown manager. And honestly, it's actually not what any of us expected. And in some ways, it is actually worse than expected and maybe a little bit disappointing. But in other ways, it's actually kind of promising. I've also got a truly novel experience to share boot.dev. They've sponsored today's video and I wish they were there when I was in uni. Man, because there, right at boot, you'll learn the coding, engineering, and career skills that you need to break into back-end web development, but with the best of twists because their founder is a massive gamer and that's why boot is different. It's an RPG. It's got quests, levels, XP, boss battles, real-time leaderboards, and an active Discord community, which is basically like you're learning to program MMO guild. It's very cool. And it's got soul, it's got sauce, just looking at the UI, the vibes, the way things are architected. And that actually matters when you're learning a new skill. You don't want it to be boring and dry and lifeless. That'll actually make you hate programming, and Boot is the opposite of that. Now, you'll learn Python and Go across a wealth of content covering the fundamentals, right through to the deeper learning topics like, say, algorithms. You'll build real projects for your portfolio. You'll do fun things like, say, asteroids in Pygame such that you can actually start to cook and make your own custom version of Asteroids with your own game rules and stuff. And you'll avoid two massive problems. One is tutorial hell, where you bounce from place to place without a cohesive learning path. And two is those get rich quick style code bootcamp hell things that are unrealistic and leave you not actually knowing everything you need to know. Boot is realistic, it has got the sauce, and it's just plain better than the rest, and it's tailored to people like us. You'll get 25% off your first purchase at boot.dev slash bellular, and it's zero risk. You can browse all of their content, you can do their demos, view their materials, and all that for free, and when you do buy, it's a 30-day money-back guarantee. What it is, though, is a huge commitment from Blizzard, and it's one that we have wanted and I think kind of needed for a long-ass time. And Blizzard are trying to make sure that whenever patch 11.1.5 drops, you will actually want to turn this thing on. Okay, let me explain. This is not a massive customizable system that is designed to replicate weak ores. That would be a pretty crazy thing to bite off, and honestly, it's not what would fit for the majority of WoW players, right? The Blizzard thing has got to be, well, elegant, simple. So this is them trying to replace it by making sure that you do not feel the need to install weak ores in the first place because the game actually covers what you need. Blizzard calls this a designer curated list of abilities and their goal is that you can turn this on and play your spec pretty much perfectly right away. No pissing about, fiddling around with settings, checking boxes, moving things to the right place. You can just go and play. And I suppose as class designers, they can actually count on you being able to see things because finally they have a UI that sort of functions. Crazy thought. And if its fully activated form is just too much, too much clutter, well, you can actually hide any of the four parts individually using edit mode. So say if you like your action bars in the middle of the screen, well, you can just keep the buff and bar tracker. Or if you want pure minimalism, I suppose you could hide your action bars and rely purely on this and your muscle memory. Okay, let's take this for a spin and see how it actually plays. Drilling into the detail, you can see that the bars at the side track inertia and initiative, which are your vital damage windows. Then the cooldown tracker here, well, that tracks your meta duration, even when it is triggered by I-beam. So that's honestly kind of neat. Now, it's only focused on the sorts of things that will change your actual decision making, so it does ignore passive things like, say, how much rage fire that you've built up. And what it basically is, is perfect for playing Havoc out of the box, right? Doing that would be more than doable. And Vengeance 2 is another really solid example of Blizzard's cooldown manager actually working pretty goddamn well. So these are almost perfect blueprints. But for other specs, it clearly needs a ton of work. So Rhett Paladin's designer curated list really does miss the mark right away. It's got a bar that shows your crusading strike for really no reason, and then say the duration of wings if talented into Radiant Glory is, uh, is just not there which seems like a very clear oversight. And more broadly, when we look at the forums, you do see that many specs have got serious issues here. And that's not to mention that it's completely missing some vital things like, say, tracking your unused trinkets. And those are often as important as your class cooldowns. Now, what's cool is, of course, it's Blizzard's UI. So we actually dug into the code. We dug into the code to see how Blizzard have actually built this thing and how it works. And what we found going into the code is that right now it is not designed for items. So uh, if Blizzard wants to do that, there will need to be a little bit of a rethink with the code. The good news is that honestly is not a super hard thing. I mean, they've got Lua developers, they can solve that. 
Now, it does lack some key layout features. As an example, there's no centered layout. One spillover sticks the icon to the left or the right, which just looks kind of horrible, honestly, especially if you're swapping between specs that have got different numbers of tractabilities because, you know, you'll swap specs. Then it will swap all of those like bits of your UI. They'll still be anchored in the same location, but they'll be different sizes, which means it will be offset. And, uh, you know, if you, if you like lining things up on a grid perfectly, that will be deeply distressing. But there is good news. Big credit goes to BlackBerry, who is the Blizzard developer, at least taking point in communication here, because it does seem they're actually on top of it. They've basically been asking people for tons of feedback. They've been responding with planned changes, which is all quite good. Now, it does raise a little bit of a problem with the whole thing. If Blizzard planned this to be an out-of-the-box tool, it needs, in an ideal world, it needs to ship that way. But if it releases in patch 11.1.5 and players try it, but then go back to their weak auras because it's actually missing something they really need, I don't think wings would be missing, but it's a convenient example. Well, good luck getting anyone to go back into the settings and toggle that thing on again. So, does it need to be perfect? No, but it does need to be good enough to be something that you can reliably use. I do understand shipping it in a minor patch, so that in the next season, with patch 11.2, it will be in a near-perfect form. But, you know, first impressions count. Now, using the actual system spans way beyond just first impressions, and it brings me to one of the most missed opportunities for Blizz. Do you remember this? It's the personal resource display. Blizzard added it in Legion, and it felt like it was the future of add-on replacements. I even remember trying to make a more beefed-up version of the personal resource display by using it as an anchor in add-ons, and I was able to make some pretty cool stuff. But that kind of highlighted a point. Even when it shipped, it didn't do anywhere near what I would want it to do, and since then, Blizzard have not really done anything much with it. A buff and resource tracking right under your character is a really great thing, but then it was basically just abandoned. So Blizzard will need to update this cooldown manager for all 39 specs, all of the time. And that is a fairly monumental task, especially when Blizzard sometimes adds things without really realizing the implications on gameplay or UI. A fantastic example of this is the Fire Mages feel the burn throughout Dragonflight. Yeah, you kind of needed UI add-ons and stuff to do that properly. All it takes is one missing buff, and this is rendered useless. People have got to use weak auras. But to look on the bright side, them actually having to update this because it's actually a core of their game that actually might help with class design in the long run, because now, if a designer is adding something, they'll have to think about what it will do to the actual user interface that Blizzard are responsible for. So, speaking of the personal resource display, this could suffer from a very similar problem. It's only one small part of a complete UI. What this does is it tracks cooldowns, buffs, and some procs. When you take a look at the forum, though, people are asking for more things. Most specifically, people want debuff tracking, and rightly so. You kind of need that for the game. This does not do that, but most class weak aura packs do actually do that, which basically means a lot of people will still want those weak auras. And so you get a feel for the gameplay implication. They'll track the important debuffs on your current target. This way, on single target or when tab targeting around, you can see everything in one place. But if you're using this, you still have to look at your enemy's frame or their nameplates to see really important things like dot durations. That's pretty major for a lot of classes, and that will force you to split your focus when making decisions like, say, when do you reapply a dot? You're basically looking, I mean, you're trying to solve one problem, but to solve that problem, find out your answer, you need to look at two different bits of UI, which splits your focus, and that doesn't lead to good, smooth gameplay. It also doesn't show important things like, say, your resources, you know, like your fury bar. It doesn't show you things that are handled by spell alerts, like, you know, these ones, which I think is a bit of a shame. And that does mean you've got four places to look at. You've got to look at your own frame, you've got to look at spell alerts, the cooldown manager, and your enemy frame or plate which is troublesome. And the odd thing is that the personal cooldown manager actually fights with the personal resource display, because if you want to use it for health and power, well, the personal resource display's position changes with camera angles and zoom, which basically means you would need to keep this tracker out of the middle of the screen, right? Because your, you know, your cooldown manager is going to be where you put it, and the personal resource display will just be slipping and sliding all over the place, potentially under the cooldown manager, meaning you cannot see what the personal resource display is showing, which is uh, not really something that sparks joy. Now, most immediately, Blizzard, come on, take the personal resource display, detach that, 
put it in edit mode, let us move it. There you go, problem solved, right? That, that would help a lot. That's one real obvious problem, but there are more. I mean, let's not even get into WoW's default nameplates being a kind of miserable experience, or just how hard it is to track your own debuffs. Listen, we've got a real problem of new players coming to World of Warcraft and, uh, you know, being bloody confused because the UI does not do a great job of hel helping to express the game mechanics. And that does make sense. WoW's UI has just been cobbled together with blood, sweat, and tears over years for so long that it's either going to take years to straighten it out piecemeal or, you know, they just do one really big push and bring us a new unified experience. And unfortunately, that means if you want to complete one and done solid covers everything experience, a solid week or a pack will still be miles ahead, which is sad. But there is good news. I don't think that is going to be true forever. This is not about being perfect. It is about being good enough. In patch 11.1, as an example, we have better swirlies, better indicators on the ground during our fights. This is still a major improvement. So piece by piece, it is getting better. This is a good start let's reckon with the future. What strikes me the most is that this is a commitment to make the game more user-friendly, and it's very obviously just the first step. As an example, I think back to Holly's post about World of Warcraft in 2025. In that post, she talked about the new player experience. Well, stuff like this, UI changes, UX changes, that is exactly what World of Warcraft needs most. In a news episode, maybe two or three weeks ago, we saw some data mining fragments, and honestly, I just assumed that this feature was going to be in Midnight. But no, it's an 11.1.5. That does actually show they are willing to move fairly fast and make this game better, basically as quick as they can. Now on those next steps, Blizzard have already confirmed that future versions of this will allow you to hide things that you do not want to see, so perhaps some filtering, and also to rearrange the order that things appear in. And when we dig into the actual code, add-ons can already remove these things. Actually, whenever this first happened, what did Matt do? He fired up his IDE and he played around with the code of this to see what things he could add or remove to this system. And basically, add-ons can remove things, but they cannot add things, they cannot rearrange things, because that is all handled by Blizzard's internal database. Maybe give us access to that Blizzard, it would be kind of neat. And what's also neat is that this says the quiet part out loud. Blizzard literally cannot say this, but this is evidence, right? The developers use weak ores. That's how they play the game, because that's basically how everyone plays the game, especially the devs who are in, say, heroic raids or pushing Mythic Plus keys. So it's really not a coincidence that the default layout of this new feature is pretty much exactly the same as the popular weak aura packs that are out there. They look so similar that it makes it obvious what the new cooldown manager does not yet do. And if this is just step one, handling this, well, I think the next step is extremely, extremely obvious. And that's the nameplate revamp. It needs to happen. And if they're already shipping this in 11.15, maybe nameplates will be in 12.0. I say this because Plater is basically required to play Mythic Plus beyond a basic level. And that's because the defaults on our nameplates are so bad at filtering buffs and debuffs that if you want to do well, if you want to see only the information that is right that you need, you need a custom Plater profile. If the designers are already curating buffs for classes, the next step would be to curate debuffs and to make sure that they show up properly. Vengeance Demon Hunter, as one example, cannot see the duration of Sigil of Flame, even though it offers a huge boost to their parry chance and is important for stagger applications. That's important. Again, Plater's insane granular per mob customization will never be beaten by an in-game solution, but this is again about Blizzard getting the default to be good enough instead of what it is right now, which is unusable. But to say this definitely means no weak ores, I think, is not the whole picture. This is class ores, right? For your class, one thing you can do in weak ores. This does not replace the other stuff, and honestly, Blizzard shouldn't really try to replace the other stuff. And for that other stuff, as an example, here's an amazing one. It's called Ultimate Mouse Cursor. Look what it does to your mouse. It's so good for visibility. You can put your casts on there. It's kind of neat. Another example is Tama's Helper. And then you've got the absolutely insane mythic raid ores that require full-time developers to create and maintain. If you use any of those things, well, this change kind of changes nothing. Things like, say, the effect of health or, which is real useful, or say the alert that fires off when you're targeted by a spell. Those are things that are way too important for the higher end of playing this game. And I guess that brings me to the verdict of this week or as killer. We have 
played at multiple classes. We have literally inspected the code to see how it works. Personally, this is actually enough for me to use it. Whether that'll be the same for you is up to you in your situation. Look, I think it basically looks great. I do not push keys super hard. I don't mythic raid, right? I just want my heroic ahead of the curve. Have some fun with my friends. This is perfectly good. I'm okay with the trade-offs. Yes, it is less customizable. It is less effective, but it looks nicer. It's in keeping with the aesthetic of the rest of the game. Sometimes I don't like flatly shaded, uh, sort of futuristic UI looking panels in my fantasy RPG. And for so many people, it's not about the function. It's about the flavor as well and the overall experience. And a part of that is having a UI that looks cohesive. And that thankfully is what this pulls off. Yes, there are problems on PTR, right? You know, your your wings are not properly tracked on a Ret Paladin. But if they actually shipped this with wings not being properly tracked, uh, I would be surprised. The PTR exists for a reason. I think those things will be fixed because they do seem to be very obvious and very easily fixable. Most importantly, this is a massive upgrade over the default UI. If you need to optimize for performance, you'll probably never touch this, but that doesn't really matter. What's more important is that this is Blizzard investing resources in player experience. If I had to give a final verdict, it would basically be this. Good work, Blizzard. This is a big commitment, and the reason why I'm pleased is because it is a big commitment and you've tried to do it anyway. You will have to make this work for every spec in the game, you'll have to update it with every single patch, and you will have to add more features and more customization. Otherwise, it will end up just like the personal resource display, a system that is neat, a system that I would love to use, but one that I do not trust enough to use. And on that, hey. Take the personal resource display and at least throw that sucker in edit mode and polish it up a little bit so it's actually usable. And maybe it will be a good thing in tandem with this feature. Okay, a big upgrade to our UI. There is so much more coming from us on patch 11.1.5, but you should really watch this next because if you want to know what patch 11.2 basically is going to be and how we get there and how it's basically a repeat of the end of the Legion expansion, well, but with a bit of a cool twist, well, Watch this video next.